you know, I'm going to take the piss. Yeah, absolutely. Just, just, just to warn you in advance. This sounds you know. fun. Hi there guys, you're watching The One Two with Ollie and Matt, your weekly Premier League roundup. Now last week we had a competition to win a Premier League shirt. We announced the winner of that competition later on in the show, so stick around and find out if you were the winner. We're going to start off our Premier League roundup by talking about the big game of the weekend, United against Spurs. United of course winning that 1-0, much to Matt's dismay. Alan Shearer has come out after that game and said that Tottenham, for all their good play, need to win a trophy. Pochettino needs to win a trophy. Otherwise, yeah. he might not actually last all that much longer. Just remind me, yeah. how long has it been since Tottenham won a trophy? Won it any kind of trophy. Like even no. the, the whatever it is, the Milk Cup, the Carabao Cup, the, yeah. the, whatever sponsor they've got at the moment. Nine years, Nine yeah? Nine years. And that was the League Cup, wasn't it? It was, it was against Chelsea. So, all right, let's look at it. Premier League, Mourinho's won it. Yeah. What, four times? Something like that since then? With Chelsea and with, uh, well, just with Chelsea actually, isn't it? Three times. No, no, it was before. It was before he won Chelsea, back 05, 06. You know? Yeah. So since then, yeah, Mourinho's no, won. because he came back and won it with them. Oh, he? once, yeah. He came back and won it with them yeah. again. So Mourinho's won the Premier League since then. He's won other trophies too. Of course, yeah. he won the League Cup last season and the with Man United and the yeah. Europa League. He called it the treble. Um, the Pochettino. treble. <laughs> Pochettino's got nothing. Like, that's the thing. Mourinho yeah. won a treble of sorts last season. Pochettino won nothing. Mm. So. How long could Pochettino actually go on playing this good football and everything, and not winning. but being basically the bridesmaid every time? No, no, I glorious agree. failure. You know? there, there, there has to come a point. Um, that's to come a point when you actually win something. I just don't <laughs> want to see it yet. I just there's Look something. At his face. There's something about being the perennial underdog, which you just enjoy when nothing's expected of you, when there's hmm. no pressure. It's something that that's something that I'm used to as a Spurs fan, but I really kind of. I don't know, look, last week I said on one of the videos about Mourinho that he hasn't hit the panic button because they lost the game, so Spurs shouldn't do the same. Yeah, okay, fair enough. But what you say about enjoying being perennial yeah. underdogs, right? I'm an Arsenal fan, and of course we had the banter era recently yeah. where we went, again, almost a decade without winning a trophy. And I remember the whole time, every time Arsenal went out of any competition, regardless of what it was, you had the press, you had the media talking about how Arsenal played pretty football and all that kind of thing, but weren't going to win trophies. And yet it seems a bit different now. Shearer seems to be the only one who's actually going for uh, Pochettino and calling him out yeah. on his failure to actually win a trophy. Because, as you say, it's been almost a decade for Spurs as well now, right? Mm. So, do you think Tottenham are getting a slightly different like, deal with the media than, than Arsenal did back in the day? I think a lot more was expected of Arsenal, coming from Invincibles one season, FA Cup the next when Vieira left, and then nothing. Not as much as expected, I suppose. And if anything, I think Shearer is just uh, Shearer is stirring shit up so that Kane will leave <laughs> and won't beat his record. That is exactly what he's doing because he's worried. He, he, he tweeted that I think. He, he said Kane's going to smash it. He said Kane's going to smash his record. I hope he does. I hope he does, and I hope he wins titles along the way. And I hope that uh, that we can shut Shearer up for winning one title <laughs> with a load of money like he did in '95 or whatever. All right, but you brought it up yourself. Kane possibly mm. leaving. You talked about it on the show last week as well. It's not just Kane though, is it? You've got Ericsson there, you've got Ali. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously Kyle Walker left last summer. There are other good players in that team, Alder Weryl for for one, mm. Hugo Lloris. I mean are Tottenham at some point gonna get to a stage where if Pochettino doesn't win trophies with them, yeah, that they're gonna start leaking these players to other big clubs. Kane, all right, Kane has said he's a one club man, that kind of thing. Yeah. Let's look at the others though. They're not necessarily don't necessarily have that link to Tottenham. The, and th this is this is always the problem that the I find with football is that no one really has that link anymore. Uh, apart from Kane growing up supporting Tottenham, loving Tottenham, that's absolutely fine. But with everyone else, as much as we love them, like I love Ericsson and Ali and Lloris and stuff, and all the Spurs fans do, their heart isn't with Tottenham. You know, they've no. grown up abroad, they have other teams that they may like. Um, and I said this with Ali recently as well that he, uh, Stephen Gerrard was his hero mm. growing up, I and mean, he was a huge Liverpool fan. You know, we love him at Spurs, but there's nothing to say that he wouldn't move elsewhere. Maybe not to Liverpool, but the the emotional connection isn't there. So, oh, I think so I'm, I'm getting mixed messages from you here a bit. Yeah. Because you're saying on the one hand, Shearer's just stirring yeah. shit up. But on the other hand, you're saying, all right, we might actually start losing these players. So are you saying basically, no, you don't Kane, necessarily mind no, 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 losing some of these players? Kane. Uh, anyone but Kane. Anyone but Kane. All right, I, there I, we have it. I know it happens. <laughs> I know it happens. You know, we lost Bale. And I remember losing Modric. I remember losing Berbatov to United. That was what's worse. If we lose Kane to Real Madrid or Barcelona, I don't mind. You can't begrudge someone going to the biggest <laughs> club in the world. 
if you lose them to United or City, yeah. then it's a bit different. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, I famous. loved Walker, but I can't imagine getting a good reception. I remember Van Persie going to Man United for That's Arsenal. That's exactly. I'd... And what's even more embarrassing is he feel. said, I'm going to win trophies, and he went and did that. That's a sucker punch. All right, last word on this. Um, so Kane wasn't there yeah. for the game at the weekend. Is this Tottenham side good enough to actually win games to get into the Champions League if Harry Kane gets a long injury? Just one one word answer, even. Jimmy. Yes. Yes? I'd say, yes, yes. I'd say no. <laughs> Let's move on. Um, we want to talk about, obviously, the other side involved in that game, uh, Man United. Um, a win for them, yeah. which they yeah. much needed, I think, after the Liverpool game a couple of weeks ago where they didn't really bother attacking that very weak Liverpool defence. And then the defeat to Huddersfield, so they needed something to mm. get them back on side. Um, but after the game, Mourinho was seen doing this to the United fans. Wasn't happy with their treatment, in particular yeah. of Lukaku, saying they're booing Lukaku. Um, he, you know, he said, oh, they pay their tickets prices so they can come in, they can boo who they want, they can boo me, they can boo Lukaku, who's working like an animal and all this yeah. kind of thing. Um, has he got a point? Are the United fans too quick to jump on their players? On um, the team? I think they're also becoming a victim. Every manager at United is a victim of Fergie's success. That's also one of the, the main problems, that to reach those heights is just so difficult to get it back again, especially when sometimes he sits and watches upstairs. It's kind of like the Hawkeyes. Um, yeah. They've got every right to boo. <laughs> uh, but, you know, with United fans, I mean, how many of them are United fans? Ooh, That's the thing. Getting into that dangerous yeah, territory, are I we? I mean, <laughs> you know, for United fans to get the train up from London every Saturday it must be such a pain. Are they too yeah. defensive though, United? Because yeah. maybe that's why the fans are getting on their back, like you say. Mm. If you play good football, like Pochettino, or like a, a Jurgen Klopp, for example. Yeah. You, you know, Liverpool have had a lot of troubles this season, but Klopp plays good football, so when it works, everybody loves it. Mm. United don't necessarily play that brilliant style of football. Marino's a bit more conservative. Yeah. Um, you know, disappointing result against Liverpool, and now a slim win against Tottenham. Is that why the fans are so quick to get on his back, do you think? I think so, because it's it's... It looks like it's easily undone because as soon as you go, you know, as soon as they go behind or as soon as they don't win, it's so quick and easy to blame the football. Mm -hmm. And the people are just like, oh, we're, you know, we're too defensive, we're doing rubbish, we're shit, all this and that. And I think it's, uh, that's the problem that he faces, that when it goes right, yeah, he looks like a tactical genius, you know, from masterminding a 1-0 victory over Spurs. Um, He's still hurting from yeah, it, I you am. can see. It was one long ball, <laughs> one stupid long ball. I'm enjoying this. Um, <laughs> yeah, he looks like a tactical genius, but when it goes wrong, he looks like a bit of an idiot for not attacking, you know, Huddersfield or... He didn't attack a really weak Liverpool defence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, like, sure. And Liverpool had some good stupid. chances there. De Gea yeah. made an absolutely phenomenal yeah, save to keep United uh, in that game. Um, so, what do you say? Is he going a bit over the top, given the, uh, the gestures, Mourinho? I mean, I think... Or is it justified? It's, it's only justified in hindsight. Well, he, he, won the game. he won the game. So yeah, I know, justified? but this, this is the thing. You can't just do it after once everything's gone right. Because what? Because if, if uh, you know, if 70,000 United fans had all gone like that and he'd lost 1-0, he would have come out in the media going, oh, United fans are shit, you know, get he did say that. team. <laughs> yeah. He would have done it a bit more. He would have got a bit more yeah. kind of a, more of a reaction. All right. So is this just Mourinho's classic theatrics? Do you think this is just yeah. normal? This is but typical Mourinho. Everyone can shut me up by saying, "Yeah, but Matty won." So I'm moving on. Another team that uh, had another bad result this weekend mm. was Everton. Sacked Ronald Koeman uh, last weekend after the defeat to Arsenal. Still lost with David Unsworth in charge. Um, who's the right man for them? Do you think David Unsworth is going to get the job full time? Um, I don't think you should, no. Okay, I just, I, He's another one of these kind of breeds of manager who their career speaks far more about them as a coach than their actual coaching ability does. I mean, it, to be honest, it really annoys me. <laughs> the, the likes of him and the likes of Tim Sherwood and there's a few others who just... Tiger Tim. <laughs> they just, they, they don't coach from the sideline, they uh -huh. captain. Tim Sherwood used to do it. He used to get up at Spurs, right, and shout the regular stuff that the the come on boys, the two minutes left, you know the Sunday league shit you hear. Box them yeah. in, nil nil, start again. You know. So why are these white, guys? White head. Why are these guys getting hired? Be, because they're close to the club, because of their careers that have gone before them. I mean, I I, I watched the Chelsea Everton game midweek yeah. as well, the League Cup, and you heard Unsworth on the side. Yep, yeah, ref, we'll have one of them. Yep, yeah, Baines in, good tackle, hundred percent. Yeah, mate. <laughs> it turns out the weekend that he said two words at half time. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not right. acceptable. Wow, what an insightful tactical genius. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I, you look at people like Marino Guardiola, I've seen that they give real sort of insights to how they're going to win the game. Standing up and just giving football banter like you would when you were a player is not being a coach. And I just think it's nonsense. All right, but Guardiola is an example of a former player who did become a successful coach. Yeah. And we got, uh, we got a comment uh, actually on uh, who could be the next Everton coach. Someone, the Glass Hammer, has commented on uh, YouTube saying Mikel Arteta has been learning under Pep at City's assistant manager. Uh, could he be the man to take over? I mean, he's a former Everton player, so he knows the club. Yeah. But maybe he's got a bit more to him than just uh, shouting from the side. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so he comes in and he's learning under Guardiola and he learns about different styles of football and he's got a great coaching team around him. You tell me what David Unsworth is going to learn from a year and a bit with Coleman, right? Mm. And by working with Duncan Ferguson every yeah. day. What is Unsworth going to learn? And how on earth is he going to take an Everton team which couldn't play football under a pretty good player and manager mm -hmm. in Coleman. So the message is Unsworth out, Arteta in, is it? I'd, I'd go with Arteta. Let's go with the glass hammer, we're with you. Arteta <laughs> in. <laughs> now we're getting towards that time of year again, as uh, Dan Wilson said on uh, Twitter here, nearly the time of year again for mock outrage of James McLean not wearing a poppy. Is it a big deal for you? Um, wearing a poppy? James, James McLean specifically, not people generally, you know. Yeah, yeah. No, he's got his reasons for it. He's got his reasons for not wearing and to be honest, then it's none of my business. It's none of anyone's business. If he wants to give money, if he wants to, you know, I mean, first of all, the players just wear them. I mean, they turn up and wear them. They're not specifically going yeah, out yeah. and buying them. The club probably gives a lot of money and, you know, they probably auction the kits off and whatever and mm -hmm. the Help for Heroes fund. But there's not um, necessarily any feeling behind it. They just sort of put yeah. a shirt on like, I mean, like they do any other week, yeah. I mean, you know, especially with the amount of foreigners in the Premier yeah. League, I'm not sure that many of them get it. Right, the it's a typically whistle. British thing, isn't yeah. it? And not something that's international. And if they didn't have a game and they didn't have to, the ref didn't blow his whistle and they didn't have to huddle and do a minute silence, they probably wouldn't notice or probably wouldn't do right. it. I mean, blowing out of proportion. Fair enough. Things. Yeah, another tweet we saw on this uh, from Dean Stevenson saying, sick of seeing people give James McLean shit for not wearing a poppy. It's his decision and I completely respect it. So. And uh, in any case, uh, we saw a fan at the Leicester Everton game who uh, <laughs> was going particularly patriotic with yeah. his look on that day and uh, has probably caused a shortage of poppies around the country anyway. Yeah, exactly. Uh, what do you think about the whole poppy issue with James McLean? Should he wear a poppy or is he perfect, perfectly within his rights to not wear one? Let us know in the comments and we'll uh, maybe revisit this next week when we get a bit closer to Remembrance right. Sunday. All right, last week we asked you to tell us who should replace uh, Jurgen Klopp at Liverpool if he was to go. And we said the, the winner of the best suggestion, the best comment would get a Premier League shirt. And now I can announce the winner. Drum roll, please. Oh, wait, Anthony without, Sherman. That was terrible. There we that go, Anthony bad. Sherman. <laughs> we will be uh, in touch with you to get a Liverpool shirt over to you uh, as soon as possible. Uh, we did get one very interesting YouTube comment from uh, Ego12 Draconis saying any of the One Football moderators would be a neat replacement for Klopp. Now, flattery will get you everywhere at One Football, but unfortunately, you didn't win this time. Keep sending in your comments, though. We want to hear. Whatever you think about the show and uh, the best comments will make their way into the show uh, next week and every week from now to the end of time. Hopefully. We could have been a great double act in the dugout. <laughs> yeah. All right, that's it for the 1-2 this week. We'll be back next week for another Premier League wrap-up. As I said, send us your comments and the best ones will be discussed in the show next week. All right, and happy birthday, Dad, as well, if you're watching. <laughs> Stigmata. Stigmata.